What's up, squad? Today we're back. We're gonna be installing it. Oh, that sounds weird. Why do you knife hand them? I don't know, man. <laughs> Fucking. It's a good point. <laughs> What's up squad? We're back and today we're going to be working on my R32 and we're going to be installing a H&R rear sway bar. So I have the same exact sway bar on my R32, the H&R sway bar, which is a lot bigger than the stock one. We'll show you the comparison once we get done with it. And it's pretty significant. It's what, eight millimeters around there, maybe even more difference. Oh yeah, the difference? Yeah. Yeah, like 13 lot. to 21 or something, but we'll yeah. bust the caliper out and we'll show you guys. Yeah, we'll get the caliper out and show you. But it's awesome. I love it in my car. So stick around and see what's up. So since we have a lift, most people don't have a lift, so we're removing the cat back off. You can drop it down to get access to it. That's how I originally did it on the R32 before I got the shop. But right here we got this bracket right here, 13 mils, two bolts. Same thing with the other side to get the exhaust hangers off. And then we have this one right here, exhaust hanger. Yeah, it's ripped. Don't worry about it. We're gonna fix it, be quiet. Shh. And then we have 17 mils here for the sleeve clamp so we can slide it off. And then that'll give us access to the heat shield and sway bar. So when you do that, you're gonna want a way to su support your rear section because otherwise it's gonna sag a lot. I um, mean, if you have another set of hands, I did my rear sway bar on my own, huge pain in the butt. Fam wasn't there. Fam, Fam was, was gone. There. Fam was busy with school and learning things. We hit these. Uh, <clears throat> we did hit these with PB blaster in advance to try and avoid this, but these were rusted shut. So definitely, definitely seized together. I don't think not using an impact would have made a difference in this case. So you, I don't think you would have gotten off. Yeah, they just would have twisted anyways. They were broken. Not a big deal. All right, so once we remove this down, we're gonna put safety glasses on because there's what? How many, what year? Oh, four, what is it now? Like 13 years worth of yeah. who knows what's up there. Um, so we're gonna wear safety glasses for that. Uh, these clips that hold on the heat shield, they're kind of a pain. These rear ones are like that. And then these upper ones have these tabs that you'll need to fold out of the way to get this down on both sides. So there's four of those. Shield a little bit past it there. Oh, now watch your face. This is when you wash your face. So now that you have the heat shield off, the exhaust out of the way, you have access to the sway bar in this area. Once you get in here, you want to inspect certain things. Like we have a little bit of surface rust on here. I'm gonna wire wheel down on this and hit it with some paint so it doesn't keep going. I uh, just want to kind of do that in everything that you do. Uh, we're gonna show you this side. Cause it's gonna be the same on both sides. You have two 13 mils here for the sway bar bracket right here. And then you have a 16 on the nut side for the end link and then a 17 wrench over here on the flat side so you can hold it in case you don't have an impact or if you want to do that also. At the beginning of the video, we talked about the size difference and we're gonna compare, compare that for you to show you the actual difference. This is, um, they say it's a 21 millimeter and then this one, I didn't look that up, but we'll show you. So 21 basically for the H&R bar. Zero that out. 15.44. For the stock, so what 15? So that's your difference right there. It's basically like six millimeter difference for the sway bars, which is you can see how drastic it is. Like this is like my pinky and like my thumb is like the width of that one. So quite a lot stiffer. And you have the adjustability so you can make it stiffer. You can adjust it there. Not everybody knows, I guess, how like why these are adjustable. Like there's two holes on this one, and there's only one hole on this one. So the softest setting is the one that's farthest out. This second hole right here, 
this is the stiffest setting and that's the softest setting and that goes for all sway bars so some have like three holes some have only one yep. but for adjustable sway bars what they mean by adjustable is you can choose where the end link will mount up stiffest softest the H&R bar does not come with any grease I called H&R and they say they're dry bushings my sway bar squeaks and I did it dry so we got some <clears throat> some lithium grease for these I mean ST my ST front sway bar came with grease and like um, power flex bushing brain fart yeah power flex bushings also come with grease so I mean it's up to you you make the decision HR doesn't doesn't require it because if they did they would send it it's a good company so we greased them that's what we decided to do so just give you a heads up what's going on uh, assembly is just reverse order removal so we're just gonna Put the sway bar back up in there with the little brackets and uh, press on. So we looked it up in the Bentley manual and the sway bar mount brackets and the sway bar end link are both uh, 25 new meters or 18 foot pounds. So Or 220 inch pounds, right? Or 220 inch pounds, yeah. So, uh, yeah, just tighten everything down to spec. Yeah. So be sure to set your end link to your desired setting. We're gonna do full stiff. It's 25. And it's like the same size nut, so I figured. Yeah, it just does like a hook thing instead of two nuts. We showed you guys last time when we took it all out, there was some surface rust in here. We cleaned it up a little bit, hit it with some paint. This had some surface rust, so did this, and so did the brackets, and it's all good now. Uh, we have it all torqued down, everything's good to go to put the heat shield back on and the exhaust back on, but here it is. That's your finished product. We went out and got a new stainless steel two and a half inch uh, sleeve clamp to replace the original one that was on the car that <clears throat> we sheared the studs on there. So, got a new one of those. This is 10 bucks. Cheap. Oh, we got a new exhaust hanger too. That we said was ripped earlier. New exhaust hanger. Here's the old one. Said it's ripped. Look at this thing. It's all <laughs> saggy. I shouldn't be able to. <laughs> Alright, so we got the heat shield back on, and now we're just going to throw the cat back back on and uh, button it all up. Now that your heat shield's back on, you want to make sure that you have clearance dial because we have a six millimeter difference in the bar. So feel up there, get in your, there with your fingers, and if you need to, pull it down a little bit. It, this moves. It's not hard. So get the clearance, check all the clearances, and that's it. <laughs> Now that the exhaust is on, temporary, it's not fully bolted up yet. You would normally have your sleeve clamp still here, unless you ran into the issue that we had of the bolts breaking. That would help you kind of get in the right location. But we have our hangers, our two hangers, here and here, with our new one on there. To help it get it on, to help them get it on a little easier than just dry, pushing them in dry, a little bit of grease in there slid them on perfectly. And then you have your two bolts on this side, and same on the other side that are just threaded in hand tight. For now now we're gonna torque them the torque is going to be 25 newton meters which is what 18 foot pounds i think it was 18 foot pounds once you get to the rear before you want to tighten up and torque them all the way you want to make sure your exhaust tips are aligned in the openings whether side to side and back to back you have a little bit of play enough to adjust it to get it better it's it perfect because yours was off a little bit by a tad bit so the that'll broken, be good the broken mount yeah could be could have been that broken clamp too that from hanging down doesn't help that exhaust clamp did not end up working out what we did was take the OEM one uh, punched out the studs that were in there and we're using uh, new stainless hardware and drilled a hole to make it fit so we're just gonna reuse the OEM one instead that exhaust clamp didn't work because it was garbage and it said it was for two and a half inch but apparently it doesn't really fit two and a half inch so got an exhaust leak and it was bumped. yeah it was leaking so
All right, squad, so that's it. It was pretty straightforward. Um, if you can't tell, we changed clothes because we forgot to film this and went and grabbed some food. Um, and now he's getting sick. And also and I'm like hurt. getting crazy <laughs> sick. But uh, we'll update you like in a few months about like what we think about it overall after we've had it for a little while. But I don't know. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like this video. And uh, you know, if you want to see more like this, let us know what you want. Yeah. See you next time.